This is the demonstration of your self-feeding fire. Now, I've seen a lot of photos, I've seen a lot of drawings, but I haven't seen anybody actually show this. And this monster takes a lot of effort to make. There are definitely some pointers on getting it started, keeping it going, and making sure it's a success. But pretty self-evident, the idea is that two ramps opposing themselves will continue to self-load logs as they're consumed to the very bottom. So I'm going to give you kind of a 360 tour all the way around, and then we're going to light it off. So the construction of this is pretty simple, and uh, most of it should be fairly self-evident. You want to make sure you line things up, make sure your logs are very, very straight so that they'll roll. But uh, there's a couple of nuances that I want to go ahead and point out to you before I start this up. Now I have yet to go ahead and put the tinder and kindling under here and get this thing started. But you'll notice that I've left a gap in between the bottom two logs. And that is for a reason. I've gone ahead and put some uh, pieces of dead wood in between to keep them open. And this is so that my fire gets started. And once the fire starts up real nice and I've got it going, these should burn and allow the logs to come together. Now, if you've done very many campfires, you know that controlling the airflow is what makes a fire burn hotter and faster or slower. And so once these things come together, because they're very flat logs, the fire should slow down. Also, what you need to notice is that I've left the ends here open. And the reason for that is that I want the flames coming out the sides and through the top. Because if you have the fire burn just here in the middle, you'll find out that your logs burn through the middle. But if you still have the two ends or four ends, your logs on the top will not be able to roll down. So you need to get complete burning all the way down if this is to succeed. So you know, make sure that your portals right here are open. Other than that, just a little bit of uh, looking after, make sure it uh, runs right, make sure your angles are correct, and we should be successful. So I'm gonna go ahead and load the tinder, load the kindling, get this thing fired up, and I'll give you updates all through the night on it. But wish me luck. Make sure you set your fire from below. Uh, you don't wanna put so much wood on top of here that you uh, go ahead and light off all your other logs prematurely. So take your time. Put it in there, flames need to be coming up, not burning down. So let's get started. It's been a little over 30 minutes and we have full combustion. We have flame all the way down. We want to have a really good even burn. Uh, our two sticks that we use to space it out and allow the oxygen to come in and really get this thing started are now uh, finally combusting and so they're going away. The flame is looking good. It's really consuming the log slowly because it's not getting the oxygen it could if you were to build a, uh, a typical fire lay. This is what we want to see. Uh, again, I want to mention this and uh, some of the finer points. I have oxygen coming out the sides and only through the top. Uh, back here behind these logs, I have a clay dirt barrier, and that's making sure that I don't have any oxygen coming up underneath these logs at all. All the flame, all the heat comes straight up or out the sides. So you want to make sure that's happening. 
uh, you also want to make sure that you have the correct angle. So take a look at the uh, pictures over and over again, kind of figure it out because you have to make sure you have the gravity, but at the same time you need to uh, put into play how that heat rising is going to affect it. So if the logs are too far straight up and down, your heat is probably going to allow them to uh, ignite. If it's uh, too close to the ground, too acute, your logs aren't going to roll correctly. So things to consider. Going on two hours now and it's uh, not even gone through a quarter of the first log. So everything looks good so far. Nice strong even fire. It's hour three, about halfway through the first set of logs. It's hour four and we're still on the first set of logs. Uh, they've got about a third left to burn through, but everything looks like it's working well. Hour five, burning pretty good. You can see it's starting to catch up the secondary logs a little bit. It's just too much heat build up. And there's not much left of the first logs, so I'm thinking it's, uh, it's slowly shifting down now. Okay, guys, it has been six whole hours, but I'm getting a deluge. Uh, I'm getting stuck out here. The mud's getting too bad. The wind and the rain is getting too bad. So we're going to shut it down. Six hours. It looks amazing. Everything is intact. Everything's working the way it should work. Uh, we'll go ahead and try and get a shot of this in the morning and see what it does. But uh, I give up. Rain's got me. All right, guys, take a look. This is hour 10. The rain has stopped, and it has continued to feed itself. The structure's up. Everything's working well. Four complete logs remaining. So this has definitely been a success. Uh, we're going to keep on running out the clock, and we'll see how long this thing actually persists. But definitely beyond my expectations. Pretty cool, guys. This is hour 11, and as you can see, the last of the logs are starting to catch. But you've got a massive bed of coals there. So, down to the home stretch. This is the 12 hour mark. We're down to two and a half logs. Pretty awesome. 13 hours. It's got about a half log each side and a massive, massive bed of coals. Sun will be up soon. Well, group, it's been 14 hours and the sun is now coming up. This thing has been burning strong for the entire time. It's got two half logs left, which presumably in these conditions is about another hour and a half to two hours worth of burn. We have about six inches of large coal underneath that. And if you were to make sure the window isn't coming over it too hard, you're looking at another three or four or five hours of the coal remaining. You can also go and bank all this. And uh, if you go ahead and put your dirt over the top of it and seal it off from the wind and kind of keep that heat in, you should be able to keep those coals for uh, near on a day, depending on your soil conditions. But this was a neat project. Again, this is your uh, self-feeding fire. But try new things. Have fun out in the wild, like and subscribe, and as always, till next time.